show you a little trick that the students found on the internet. Per the manual, they tell us to check it by pressing it, and then while uh, releasing it, we want to make sure that it works smoothly. That's what I'm going to do right now. So to do that, it's common that we just take a screwdriver in here. This one turns clockwise while you apply a little pressure with your finger. As I let out, I'm looking for smooth action. Well, the aftermarket world has this tool, which is pretty handy, which if you look at the back side of these, it's pretty common to have this cross. So what this does is allows it to be a screwdriver to wind it up, and then this is a lock to hold it in place. Let me show you how to use this tool. I picked it up from k &L Supply, and here's their part number. Hold the bottom lock up against the spring as you wind it, and then when it's bottomed out, you'll lock it in. What I'm going to do is look for a spot for that to lock in, like so. This cutaway engine here, and you can see what I was showing on this plunger here. On these automatic types, what we're doing is we're taking up this free play, and as that chain stretches, that is going to let that just go out and take up that free play. Back to our tool, like I said, we put this in the engine, and then we pull this, and this would spring out in the position. So they want to make sure that it will operate smoothly. So, I just want to prove a point here. You see in the service manual that it is normal. It's saying use a small, thin screwdriver to do the installation. The trick part of this that the students had found. Just wind it up like the stock method with the screwdriver to start with. I'm bottomed out right now. If I give it just a slight little snug turn here, it holds itself. I've tried shaking it, getting it to bang around, and it can pop out so it doesn't permanently lock it. Here's another tension I grab just to try this out. No matter what I do, it, it will not lock. I love outside the box thinking and I also love working uh, in a job like this where I'm in a lab and get to experiment a lot, and especially with students that like to go out and do research and look at different things and bring it back here. So we have a lot of uh, great lessons that we get to share with the world here on YouTube. This really reminds me of a recent video I saw of a new product of an umbrella that's a real outside the box where instead of it folding down, it folds backwards and you can actually pull it into your vehicle or your car and it looks you know, super useful and not so awkward as, as what we've thought umbrellas to be forever and ever, right? Well, how's it apply to being a mechanic? I mean, the way I look at this is that you know, people will be able to take something that they haven't worked with a lot, and especially it's our younger technicians or our new technicians entering the field. And when you have a willingness to question, hey, why do you do it this way? Have you thought about doing it this, you know, like this? I think that's great stuff. But I also think it's a balancing act. You know, are you doing that on your own time? Because if you're doing it on shop time, uh, experimenting is probably not the best place for it. I hope you found this video useful. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, would you please do so? Also hit that notification button so you'll know about all our future videos. As I always say, keep wrenching and make it a great day.